Hey everybody, Mike Naso here from IPR. On this map alone, three systems to keep an eye on. Tropical Storm Eliana in the Eastern Pacific, Area of Disturbed Weather in the Western Caribbean, and the Wave Train, the ITCZ, and this wave has been persistent here. I think this could be a problem in the Caribbean. More importantly though, off the coast of Africa, TD4 just developed here uh, about an hour ago. Off the coast of Africa, 35 miles an hour, gusting to 45, and it's going to impact the Cape Verde Islands. There's a tropical storm warning out for you. Uh, you think they can't get impacted, but in 1982, I'm telling you, a tropical storm barrel in 82 impacted the Cape Verde Islands and killed many, many people due to flooding. So I uh, don't think that these islands uh, ain't got nobody there. They're, you know... There's people there, and there is a storm there, so we got to watch it very carefully. West-northwest at 11,007 millibars. The Hurricane Center thinks that it's going to continue to the northwest, west-northwest out in this general direction. And uh, then uh, eventually by Sunday, it would probably be out here near 50 and 30, which is well away from land. Looking at it now on satellite, looking pretty good with some spiral uh, banding taking uh, shape. You have some good outflow and... Good convection firing near the center of classical developing Cape Verde tropical cyclone. Here's a l image of it and the entire coast of Africa, and you can see it's large, which may not bode well if some dry air gets entrained. That could become a problem. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Here's the latest model guidance spread, and you can see the extrapolated movement here west northwest at 11. That would take it towards 45 west and about, say, 18 north by Sunday. Most of the models are turning it northwest right away. Uh, the reason there is going to be a large ridge of high pressure is going to slide a little bit eastward. There's going to be a weakness which will allow the tropical cyclone to turn north into it. How soon does it do that? A couple of factors here. First of all, I think it, it will continue its general westward to west-northwest movement for the next 24 hours or so and then gradually start to turn by 45-50 west. Uh, in fact, it could do it a little bit sooner. Somewhere in uh, this area, I think it will turn over the next couple of days. I do not think it's going to move northwest here on out, but I do think it will end up turning. Then again, if it strengthens rapidly into a hurricane, which is possible, I don't think it will, I think it will still become a hurricane, but not a strong one, uh, then it could start moving northwest quicker. So a lot of variables into this. 12Z Canadian, 144 hours, here's our system, right about where the Hurricane Center thinks turning, and you can see this little doodad north of the Yucatan, this is our tropical wave in the ITCZ, Moving across the Caribbean, says the Canadian. MM5, there's our system in about five days. Uh, another wave moving off behind it, and there's the wave from the ITCZ over Hispaniola. And then there's Eliana, which this is the only model that actually turns it back towards land, which is not the forecast, but it's interesting to note. And then there's the No Gaps, which has another wave uh, come off the ITCZ and form a storm in about six days moving towards the islands, but kind of loses... Uh, TD4 uh, by that time. Keep in mind, a lot of the models lost Chris, even when Chris was persistent, and then they were right. So if they're not really holding on to this system, it could become Debbie and then fall apart. 84-hour NAM, there's our way from the ITCZ south of Hispaniola moving west-northwest. Uh, keep an eye on that. And then here's the 156-hour GFS about a week from now. Clearly shows it going right into a weakness at about 50 45, 50 west, so I, I mean, I'd have to say, I think in about a week, the storm should be up here weakening. Could become a hurricane, though. I would not be surprised to see it become the first hurricane of the Atlantic season. Shears low right near the Cape Verde Islands, so it shouldn't have much of a problem strengthening over the next 24 hours, and waters are warm. Uh, but the dry air could be a factor, and you can see that even better. You can see the dry air up here, but the system has a good moisture envelope, and it's strengthening, so it might be able to kind of cancel out that dry air, but that could be a factor if it continues to have these arms, as I like to say, spiraling, uh, then it's easy for dry air to intrude right in on the system. But at this point, it uh, looks like steady, steady strengthening up towards hurricane status over the next few days. Uh, big mess in the Western Caribbean and Atlantic is extending all the way up to Florida. This could develop, uh, it's been persistent, we saw it start down here and it exited, and it's been slowly bubbling up this direction. I would not be surprised with persistence. That's one thing you look for if something could develop, but at this point, nothing organized there. Eastern Pacific, uh, Hector weakening. 
Eliana strengthening. And uh, you can see Hector right now, 45 miles an hour. Be did become a Category 2 hurricane. It's going to move west and continue to weaken. But Eliana has been rapidly intensifying. It was just a couple of hours up, a couple of hours ago upgraded to a TD. And it's now a TS, and it probably become a hurricane. Looks like 2 a.m. Wednesday, says the Hurricane Center. Personally, I think it will become a hurricane by tomorrow, maybe tomorrow late morning, early afternoon. And uh, they have it becoming a Category 2 by Thursday evening. I think it might be a Category 3 uh, hurricane by uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, but nevertheless, it should move northwest, paralleling the Mexican coast. And no real threat right now, but you can see getting better, getting very... It has good outflow in almost every quadrant, a lot of moisture within organizing near the center. So all factors seem uh, favorable. Here's a very powerful major hurricane, Aoki, out here south, uh, south west of Hawaii, well out there. There's the international date line, 180, and uh, if it crosses that, then it becomes Typhoon Aoki. Uh, it doesn't look like it'll do that. It's forecast to continue to be just to the east of the international date line, but nevertheless, it could become a Category 4 hurricane over the next several days. There's the track. Category 4 hurricane on Tuesday, and then steadily weakening, and then bending west as a Category 1, so it might make it to the international date line, uh, but uh, just nothing but high surf for Hawaii. I'm Mike Naso with the latest on the tropics. Stay tuned to IPR.